Well, it looks like Santa came early. What, what did you get for a present, Badge? I got a new vice. Oh! We've been fighting and fighting and fighting for so long about this vice that we never had one. So now we got one and now we're just putting it on. There we so, go. Because we got to make these really cool lines and... Yeah, got to use that. It's all good. Hello from Canada, again. See, I'm uh, being welcomed into Canada quite well. You can probably see this shirt. <laughs> Thanks, uh, campground host Brad, for the t-shirt. Uh, today's video is going to be about installing half of the veggie system. Uh, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, um, you know, definitely watch the whole video because it's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, in a nutshell, I'll give you a quick run through. We're doing dual electric pumps, and so we are doing the diesel side of things today. Michael is uh, smuggling in a uh, pump uh, tonight, so That's right, Canadians smuggle everything back in from the states. <laughs> That's what Trump says, anyway. <laughs> that we smuggle everything. Yeah, uh, he's his feelings are a little Michael hurt. Smuggle Jackson, <laughs> not really smuggle Michael. Um, so, uh, anyways, we're doing the diesel. <laughs> we're doing the diesel side today, uh, and then we're waiting on a couple parts, and then. Uh, the next couple videos we'll, we'll get the veggie part that'll be the really interesting part uh but it's still it's going to be the same setup as uh this one um so let's begin by the way apparently there's some people who <laughs> thought i was uh overreacting about mosquitoes well just in case you're wondering how much i do really hate mosquitoes i really hate mosquitoes this is like my third or fourth uh, thing a mosquito. I haven't used this uh, repellent. I haven't used this one yet, but you know, once I saw it, I bought it. So I'm going to add that to my collection. Okay, Badge, do you want to okay. do the honors and tell them what the heck we are doing? What we are doing is we're putting in the fuel lines. Now what we've decided, we're going to keep the stock fuel lines going from the filter housing to the head. For the simple reason is, I'm going to show you and nobody has told us about this. Nobody. Anywhere. That's a friggin' filter in there. A screen. Wait, wait. Let's get this in focus. That's a screen. That goes into the head. And there we go. And nobody said anything about these. Yep. Nothing. Yep. Zero. Nato. So that's what I say. There's a lot of information out there, but they don't tell you the right shit. And there's debris in there, just so everybody knows, so everybody's clear. And uh, we we're just essentially going to be reusing the some stock of the... stock one, we're going to come from the right head up to the front, and then we're going to go up here. And the left head's about the same length, so it'll go over to the same spot. But, Mr. Jax, and I'm a rock star, <laughs> we are going to go with this for the return line. The steel braided drag racing stuff, of course. Aeroquip hose, which is super strong. It's 1,000 pounds, but it's got the coating on it for heat and the AeroQuip fittings. But we're not putting the AeroQuip fittings in the head, just on the hose. We're going to use uh, steel fittings into the head. Adapters, right? Adapters, yeah. Yep. And so that's going to go on there like so, and that's going to come back from the head. Yeah, and the reason we're doing this hose is because it goes close to the turbo and high yeah. heat. So yeah. even though it was uh, like 25 or 20 bucks a foot, um, better to spend a little we're bit only, more money. We're only going to run a couple feet. Of yeah, it, exactly. Right? So, yeah, so we went and got all the fittings for that. we got to wait for our blocks because Michael's smuggling it in from the States. Mm -hmm. so, oh, and by blocks, he's, he means another one of these oh, the, solenoid the valves. Solenoid valves. This is, Michael's smuggling in from the States. Yep. Yeah, shipping, by the way, was super expensive. That's why I sent it to Michael. 200 bucks. Yeah. 200 bucks to bring it in. Well, we didn't even pay 200 bucks to fly Michael here. So there you <laughs> yeah, this whole unit, I think, was, uh, I got a discount, so it was like $99. Yeah. Uh, and But the shipping was, was going to be uh, uh, also $99. Uh, so this is a, what is called a solenoid valve. And this is basically what selects the, which fuel you want. And you just, it's operated by a, a, a button on the dash. I think that I showed you the video yesterday when the lights go on, it's 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 pressing this and it activates um, one of the two uh, fuels here. So that's what it is and that's what you need if you're doing an electronic system. So you know, Greg's, Greg's in Alberta is like the Home Depot of the world, right? They're, or the Walmart. Like Greg's have got everything from soup to nut. As 
as Jax will tell you, that girl was super, she knew her stuff. Oh, yeah. So anyway, this is ORB here, and now we got an adapter to go to pipe thread because we are going to use the full truck fuel system. All we're going to do is cut the synthetic line, the synthetic line, and put the pump in. That's it. Yeah, so that's so, a diesel side. All we're doing in modification is we removed yesterday the mechanical pump over yeah. by the, the diesel tank. We're installing a, a, diesel, a, a pump. It's actually a waste vegetable oil, a WVO designs pump, yeah. but it's going to be a pump, uh, electric pump, uh, on the diesel side, and then we'll do the same thing on the veggie side. Now, everybody's going to ask why. Well, the simple reason is if you buy a Fast or a Air Dog or one of them pumps, they are around the eight to nine hundred dollar mark, and we got this one here for like five hundred bucks. So it does the same thing, and this pump I think will last forever. Yeah. So we just weighed out the odds, and we just instead of using a stock fuel pump, we just went to this one here because it was yeah. I think, cheaper. Than and that. also, I got some cool toys over at the oh, uh, distributor cool. thing. Yeah. This is my favorite Jeez. part. So uh, this, uh, so you know, everybody has the uh, uh, you know, you know big, horn honk. The big thing is big trucker jacks, right? <laughs> so he's got this little candy ass horn in there. So let's see what it. Let's see if we can get it. I yeah. think we can get it. Now listen to this candy ass horn. Nah, it's not gonna work. I don't, oh, you have to turn the key. Oh yeah. So now what we're gonna do is hook this air solenoid up to it and then we're gonna put this bad boy on it. Oh, I think it's outside. Here, it's this outside? is outside? Yeah, this it's is what outside. I got at the junkyard, guys. I, I, I salvaged it off of an old 1970s uh, uh, water truck. So we're gonna take this off, take this valve out, because this is mechanical and we wouldn't want Jax to pull it mechanically. <laughs> God forbid I have to do something. So you'd have to do something. <laughs> this is gonna, we're gonna mount this underneath or probably up top where you can shine it. And then we'll put an airline to here, airline to there. He'll push on the horn and he'll make an air sound. That's a cool upgrade. I know. And also we got little fittings. Um, now I, I must credit Dean for this, uh, the schoolie. I saw he put uh, an air valve on his air tank because if you got air, air brakes, you have an air tank. Well, wow. we're adding valves so then I can wow. pump up my tires or anybody within 30 feet if somebody has a flat. So that's a pretty cool thing. And I'm like, I'm loving the fact that it's over here. I'm loving the fact that I have all these toys on such a heavy duty machine, you know? I mean, who doesn't want an air compressor and an air horn? Uh, on their own vehicle, right? Look at, this. Look at that bad boy. Look at this. You'd be able to go to the next neighbor's and pump his tires out. <laughs> huh? This is an aero equipped fitting. This is aluminum. And this is stainless steel. These are very sharp. They'll go right through your finger in a heartbeat. What this goes on is you push the collar on. Like so. Well, it's not quite that easy, but it does. That's what we got the vice for. See? <laughs> okay. Now you push it down until you see the rubber up against the... Here, let's go with this on. Let's stay right there. See right there? The rubber is pushed up against the thing. Now, you can flare it a bit with a knife, but you don't really need to. Okay? Now this is the trick to it. It's ton and ton and ton of grease. So you either use grease or oil or something like that. This is ordinary motor oil. Now the trick to these are, I'm going to show you, is you can't catch this on the rubber because it'll put a, what they call a butterfly in it and then it won't work. So you just wiggle it around in there like so and then you do it by hand. Don't use a wrench. If it doesn't go in by hand, it's wrong. Okay? 
I know you're going to see this and say, Jesus, this is so friggin' easy. <laughs> but you just do it by hand, no tools, no impacts, no nothing. And then you cut it, turn this down until it becomes flush with the nut here, right? This is like a uh, custom propane hose. This is a custom. Yeah. This Same. is drag racing stuff. Some race car stuff. This here, when I'm done with it, the way I did it, it'll be good for a thousand pounds. And then it gets tight, and then you know you got it just about right where you want it. You don't necessarily have to bring it all the way there, but you can leave a little gap. There, done. Now when you get it in there, the big thing is you have to clean the hose out. There's a couple ways of doing it. One's take a little piece of foam rubber, stick it in there and blow it through with air. But when you do that, you have to make sure that the foam rubber blows out. I'm sorry, you just have to think a little bit. So that's how that goes. Now what we're going to do is put this on. Now this is really close to the turbo, so we're going to go, Brad's got the jet cars just over the way. We're going to get some heat tape and put it around here so that it'll heat, heat resistance. So that's what we're going to do. When yeah. you cut this hose, you'll have to put masking tape on it because when you cut this, it'll just go poof, and you'll never get it in. So what you do is you put masking tape where you want it, put a line, cut it in the middle, and then that way it won't fray like this, right? To a little hiccup here no big deal uh, we're working with some very tight spaces down here so instead of having a, a straight connector which uh, you can't see right now we're gonna have to get an angled connector because this one bumps into the high pressure oil pump which is right there and the other one is too close to the turbo what we're doing is we're mounting the pump here the diesel pump here we'll put the veggie on the other side because we have to cut this line the black line and put it into the pump, right? So we'll just make one cut, zinc, zinc, done like supper. Okay, we're gonna give you one on one on air system. This is a bus. You know, every truck's got wet, dry, and A and B tanks, right? Okay, this tank here on a bus is all three tanks in one. The white part is the wet tank, and then you got your red and your blue. They call it red or blue or one or two, whatever you want to call it. That's why you got all these drain valves, right? Because you got to drain the water out of every one. This one does not drain into that one. This one does not drain into this one. So that's why there's drains on every tank because they don't drain in each other. There's check valves between them, between these three tanks, but they're on the top because there arises and you don't put it down the bottom because of moisture. So, okay, so you got this big airline coming down here. This is what you call an air dryer, 89 air dryer. It's probably one of the best on the market. Now, what you want to do if you're living in Louisiana or south of Tennessee is you've got to change the element in this every year. Nobody ever does, but I'm not saying it's right. I'm just, a, I'm just the, the messenger. So this is an 89. The air comes in here, goes in through the element, it takes the moisture out. There's a check valve here. Goes into this tank here. And then it comes out this line. And it tees into these two tanks. And that's how your air gets there. Right? <laughs> this line here is the unloader line. Right here, this little one. And what the unloader line does is when you get it up to pressure, whatever it is, 120. 120 is the minimum you want. 120, 125, 127, around there, it doesn't matter. It's just that if you crank it up to 125, that'll give you two more applications before it gets to 120. That's just stupid stuff, right? But anyway, that's what it does. So this unloader line, when it comes up, the compressor doesn't pump air all the time. 
It just put, puts it under pressure. It gets up the 120. The governor, which will show you up front, says, okay, you're up the pressure. And then you hear a big choosh. It's the air coming out here. Oh, that's where that noise comes out of. So that when I'm driving down the street here. and then I get up to pressure and then it lets yeah. off, huh? And this is a little heater here. So if you get any moisture in there, it'll keep that wet, like uh, fluid, so it won't freeze, right? Because if the air dry freezer, it won't do nothing. Mm. But even if it freezes, it'll still cut out because the air pressure coming from the compressor will come down to the frozen air dryer, and it'll say, oh, it's all good because this unloader line, when it's unloaded, has to keep the 120 pounds of air in it. If it doesn't, that's when you hear your air dryers going... Do -do 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 this line's got a hole in it, or the unloader's got a hole in it, or the governor's not working right. So boys and their toys, you got to <laughs> have a thing to pump his tires up, which is kind of handy because if you know what it costs to get a tire fixed on the road, but this is all kind of handy. You know, you can blow your rubber boats up. You can oh yeah, our inflatable mattresses. Up. Dude, we can do mattress. the inflatable mattresses with this thing, and, yeah, and we know. can do a uh, uh, blow up, uh, 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 you know, uh, water, you know, what are yeah. the things, rafts? Remember I was telling you about boys and their toys? Yeah. This is a $147 adjustable wrench. Can you believe that anybody <laughs> would pay $147 for adjustable wrench? That's rent? funny. It is good, though. It does, it's a pipe wrench and a... Yeah. Look at that. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Here, hold that up there. Uh, it goes like, right like that, yeah? Cool. So, um, for anybody who wants to make this modification, what parts do we have here? We've got a closed nipple. Yep. All quarter-inch pipe. Closed nipple, ball valve, and a quick coupler. Whatever one you want. This Sweet. one, I think, is the most common in A or something. That sure is fun. Oh, and by the way, thanks to uh, Dean for, um, uh, you know, doing this. This is his idea. His idea, yeah. And then yeah. we're and then we're doing it here. And of course, he's, guess what, Badge? Guess what Dean told me? So <laughs> then we have to come up with a method, right? So I say we should have put this on a bulkhead, but he said no. So we're going to try that and see if how much dirt and garbage gets in there. But oh, uh, yeah, you're right. If not, we might want to just put a 90 on that or put it right out to there. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's all right. We can put uh, yeah. something on it. All right, so look at this. goes over here. goes all the way back here. See that? Yeah? Isn't that cool? Nice little mod. By the way, this uh, coiled hose is like 50 bucks. Uh, I think it's worth it. All right, what do you got? You're going to love this one. So you're, you don't want to start your truck to build the air up, right? Yeah. You put this in there, <laughs> you get the air compressor, and they're filling up your truck. Oh, crap. Except we got a leak inside because uh, it's ripped apart, but yeah, I, I understand know, the so. idea. See? Yeah. So you're saying there, I... Uh, my truck won't start, I need some air, so Michael comes over, or Dino, or yeah. somebody, and you just take their airline and plug into yeah, it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this guy's full of tricks right here. Bad, do you like my horn? Huh? Yeah. All right, let's test it out. It'll yeah. work. Let's It'll test work. it out. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap! That'll, that'll scare the crap out of somebody. That'll oh my god, good. that's amazing. Well, the next few videos, actually several videos of us getting this thing together are definitely more for the DIY <laughs> kind of uh, fan, fanatic, because um, uh, they're definitely going to be a little intricate and we're thrown a lot of curveballs. Uh, there's not a lot of great information for this stuff online, and um, it seems that there's a lot of companies going out of business. Um, luckily for me, I found a dude who is an absolute guru with uh, waste vegetable oil. Um, and you could also run motor oil in it, waste motor oil, WMO. Uh, you could do kerosene and uh, some other things. Um, 
So I'll put his link in the bottom, uh, or actually I'll put it on the screen right now, uh, his email, nategun22 at gmail.com. Um, we talked about um, all this stuff. He was just doing me a favor, and I said, look, there's going to be a lot of people asking me uh, for your contact information, so if they want to, uh, you know, contact you and work with you, what, how, what's the deal? So he said, uh, proposed, um, uh, he would design a system, uh, troubleshoot, you know, hold your hand through the DIY process, help you order the correct parts uh, for $200 for a year. Um, and in my opinion, <laughs> that's a good deal. Because uh, even having badge, uh, a heavy duty diesel mechanic for many many years um, you know we still were trying to figure it out because again we didn't have detailed instructions so if anybody wants to do something like this what we're doing get a hold of Nate he's been doing it for a long time and he's been the install person so um, just thought I would share that with you he's been excellent and um, I'm not really sure we could have done it without him because the yeah, there was another guy and he was less than helpful. So anyways, that's it for today. If you guys prefer the traveling videos, those will be happening after this thing is done here. Um, but to reiterate, I got a new bus. The other one was costing me too much money and that's why we're doing the vegetable oil system on the bus. Um, so if you do prefer those, check in with, check in with me uh, uh, September or after. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next upload. Thanks for watching.